Good evening. Welcome in. Welcome back to another midweek meditation. How are you, soul friend? How is it with your soul this evening? I know I am on a huge high. We've had two 80 degree days in a row in May in central Ohio. And so I always liken that if you get more than one, which can always be a fluke, uh, more than one in a row, I feel like I've seen a unicorn. So I'm very much on a high and I have big energy, vibrant energy today. And I am, I feel like I've had a very full day, um, lots of joy, lots of peace, lots of gratitude, just flowing through my heart, through my whole being. And I hope and pray that that has been your experience as well. If it hasn't, all the more reason to gather with a friend and just seek the Lord in prayer. So tonight we're going to do our normal sequence, starting with just some quiet, deep breathing. Um, and I selected an essential oil that I thought would be beautiful for this particular meditation. Tonight, we're going to talk about nourishment. And I've chosen lime essential oil. If you have this one, um, emotionally, it's known as the oil of zest for life. When I think about lime and just having zest for life, it makes me think about the kind of life I want to live while I'm here on earth. And then I also think about the way that life's going to be in the everlasting, just full of life, full of vitality, um, fully nourished to the overflow with all of God's goodness. And so whether that's where you are, that's how you come tonight, or maybe that's an area of deep need. Um, either way, I think this oil would be a beautiful complement to our meditation practice. So let me pray for us and then we'll begin our deep breathing. We're just gonna be breathing in, holding, and then um, releasing for equal lengths of time. I like to re recommend about three to five seconds for each. And just as we exhale, letting go of the cares of the day, um, if you're still just settling into your space, feel free to do that. Do some stretching if you need to, work it out, get yourself comfortable. Um, I recommend having a beverage, either tea or water or perfect, um, whatever you might like. And always your choice if you wanna have a journal and a pen handy or because we record, the, you always have the beautiful invitation to come back with a pen and journal if you want to just be in the moment uh, for the first time through. So let me pray for us and then we'll do some deep breathing. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this space. We thank you, Lord, that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. Help us to feel your presence this evening. Fill us to the full and to overflowing with your spirit, with your gifts of, li of life and light and love. <clears throat> Help us to release as we exhale anything that's no longer serving us. And with each inhale, Lord, help us to breathe in more and more of you. Help us to hunger, help us to thirst only for more and more of you. Guide us in this meditation practice tonight and draw us ever closer to you, Lord. Amen.
<clears throat> so let's look to our scripture for this evening. I'm going to be reading from John 6, 35. <clears throat> then I'll go over to the poem that I have for tonight. I will read that through twice, and then I'll come back to our scripture. <clears throat> Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I am grateful for nourishment. Oh, bread of life living water, how my appetites have transformed. I trust you with my hunger and my thirst. Help me to always put you first and be filled. I am grateful for nourishment. Oh, bread of life, living water, how my appetites have transformed. I trust you with my hunger and my thirst. Help me to always put you first and be filled. <clears throat> Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is John 6, 35, and this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll begin with several questions to guide us through the meditation portion. Let's begin by trying to remember a time when you were truly hungry or thirsty. And I know that's difficult um, if you're participating in a meditation like this. We have technology at our disposal. We likely live in a home. We likely drive a car. We're likely gainfully employed. And for the most part, we're having our needs met on a regular basis. But um, stretch, if you will, to think about a time when you truly felt hungry or thirsty and some examples that came to mind, you might have one that springs to mind. Um, but I recalled a couple of times when I've either been locked out of my house or uh, on the side of the road with a broken down car and just feeling a moment of distress and just wondering where will my help come from? Um, when will relief come to me? And so let's just remember what it feels like to be in a space like that and um, lean in to the Lord and envision his rescue of us. Thank <laughs> you. 
I personally just felt a really strong sense of conviction in that moment of reflection, um, just reliving that panicked feeling, that moment of distress. And I just feel a pull, an invitation to um, just remember in those moments, whether they're as dramatic as being locked out of your house or on the side of the road with your car or whatever memory um, was brought to mind for you or they're just your day-to-day -day, um, going from moment to moment. I just feel this pull and this invitation to lean on the Lord, to go to him first, before it occurs to me to start to worry all the way, um, you know, we can become unraveled pretty quickly all the way into a panic before we would get anywhere near that place to just turn to him he is where our help comes from. <clears throat> and so with that as a backdrop, let's consider and confess. What are you craving in this season of life? <clears throat> Let's confess any unhealthy desires that rise up within us. Maybe it has to do specifically with foods. Um, I tend to crave salty things and sweet things. I like both. Um, maybe for you, it's a season of coveting or comparing. Um, whatever bubbles up within um, I just want to go from this place of conviction into confession and just bring any unhealthy desires we might be harboring before the Lord. Just leave them at the feet of, foot of the cross. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers and that you receive our confessions with mercy and grace. Thank you. <clears throat> and now let's express something that we might desire instead, something life-giving, something way more satisfying than that unhealthy thing that we might have been craving. Um, this could be a healthy food, it could be good rest, purity, integrity, um, healthy regular movement, exercise, a um, healthy relationship with money, the desire to save money versus spend. Lord, we just invite you in to transform our appetites, and we pray that you would increase our hunger and thirst for you and for those things that are of you, for those things that you have for us. Let's express our desires to the Lord for whatever healthy thing we want him to grow in us. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. And so now let's meditate on who God is. God as enough. God as all we need. Lord, you are the bread of life. Lord, you are the living water. Lord, you are the vine and we are your branches. We love to meditate on who you are. And it's because of you that these healthy desires can grow within us. We give you our trust and we give you our faith. Lord, we worship and praise you now for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You alone are worthy of our praise and our worship. You alone, Lord, can do this. It's by your power and might, not my own, that I might experience a transformation in my heart's desires, in my appetites, in my cravings. And so I thank you, Lord, that your will can be done in my life. I invite you in and I thank you for your faithfulness to come in and change me, shape me, mold me into your likeness more and more into Christ likeness. Amen. And so finally, I just invite you to um, assume a posture to receive just open hands, open arms, um, open wide in front of you. And we just invite the Lord to come now and fill us to overflowing. Lord, we thank you for your power and your presence here among us in this space. We invite you to fill us to overflowing with your good desires. Increase our hunger for you, increase our thirst for you. 
<clears throat> Fill us with all of your goodness that could never disappoint, that only satisfies. <clears throat> More, Lord. More, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Um, you may want to put your hand on your mind, on your brain, and just invite the Lord to come in and change your thinking, change your thought patterns. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds. We do not conform to this world, but we allow him to come in and give us new thoughts to speak truth. Um, we make space for memorizing scripture and just embodying the word, the truth, that we have every ability to choose what is good and what is right and what is pure and what is lovely and what is healthy for us, body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. And so if you're needing to replace some negative or unhealthy thoughts with thoughts that are for you from the Lord, then you may just want to put your hand on your head and just show that um, you are open and willing to receive a download, if you will, into that beautiful brain of yours. Just expand its capacity. Just open it up uh, in trust and in faith that the Lord can give you those thoughts that you need in those moments, those tender moments, those moments right before a decision is made to either do a healthy thing or a less healthy thing. We just invite you, Lord, into our thoughts, into our minds, into our brains. We pray against well-worn paths that are not serving us, Lord. And we invite you to come in um, and break down walls and create brand new beautiful paths to life and health in Jesus name. Hmm. 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 Thank you, Lord. I really felt strongly that um, praying over our minds, our thoughts, our brains would be applicable to anyone um, praying with us. Um, but if you happen to be uh, asking the Lord to come in inside and fill you with regard to something very specific, maybe it's physical appetites for food, um, if there's any type of addiction, if you need to get off the couch and move more, um, if you're looking for more purity in your speech, whatever that may be, feel free to hit pause on this recording and lay hands on whatever physical part of the body that you just want to invite the Lord into specifically to um, just anoint with his favor, with his blessing, have him equip you, um, have him fill you to overflowing in those specific areas. Um, 
fulfilling your hunger and your thirst with more of him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And so as always, because these, are because these meditations are recording, your first invitation is always to come back and re-listen and to just get more and more out of it. Um, your second invitation, these are for your week ahead, is um, to try something new. I'm going specifically with food in this example, um, just playing off the theme of nourishment and um, the different food imagery in the scripture and the poem. So choose a whole food or a juice that is new to you. And it doesn't have to be exotic. Maybe your favorite vegetable is broccoli and you eat that all the time. And so you're just gonna switch to carrots and see what that is like. Um, same with fruits. It doesn't have to be an exotic fruit, or maybe it is for you. Um, it's really fun when Greg goes to the market and brings home something new. I remember last summer, I think it was last summer, we tried dragon fruit for the first time, and it's just so gorgeous. It's just this bright pink and the contrast with the little teeny tiny black seeds um, to just cut into something exotic and new and see what it looks like. And I remember um, several years ago now, maybe five or six years ago, and um, we'd had pomegranate before, but we'd never cut into one ourselves, and just harvesting the little arrows out of a pomegranate, and tasting them in your mouth, um, and just letting them burst, and it's just such a fun experience. So there are so many whole foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds out there to try. Uh, I think it would just be really fun to bring something new into your meal plan and then just praise God for the abundance uh, that he provides for us. Invitation number three is into confession and just exploring more deeply any unhealthy desires um, and maybe bringing one that you um, used in tonight's meditation practice a step further. Maybe take it to a prayer partner and ask for their prayer over you, asking them to join you maybe as an accountability partner as well, seeking forgiveness, seeking strength or whatever other resources you need to help make a lasting healthy change. <clears throat> Fourth invitation for this week ahead is to take communion. Now, maybe you do that with your church body, and that's a beautiful practice to participate in communally, or maybe you want to do that at home in a silent practice by yourself or with your family. Uh, it does not have to be elaborate. You do not have to be an ordained minister to partake of communion elements in the name of Jesus. You can use uh, grape juice or wine, just a small amount will do, and a cracker or a piece of bread. If you have a book of common prayer, it's really beautiful to go back and read the traditional words of preparation before your communion, or you can choose a beautiful scripture or do a heartfelt prayer before the Lord, and he will bless that Eucharistic experience that you're having, that union that you're coming into with him through the body and the blood. Amen. And then the fifth invitation for this week is to practice hospitality. Um, break bread with a friend or a neighbor, maybe someone you haven't seen for a while, um, pray over your meal, and then pray for each other, and just see how that feels, and, and what it's like to bring the Lord into a special meal, something that you've given extra thought and preparation over. 
thank you, Lord, for the gifts of hospitality. And especially if that's not one of your um, go-to gifts, I invite you to stretch yourself and really go for it. Really invite the Lord into your plans and preparations. Ask him who you should invite, what, sh what you should do, what you should eat, um, what your table should look like. Really have some fun with setting a scene, with thinking about people in advance, praying over them before the meal even begins, maybe even days prior. Start to think about these people, this meal, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like and be like, um, and just let the love of God just pour, just flow through you into this special event and, and see what that is like. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Well, let me pray for us before I release us into a beautiful, restful evening. Dear God, thank you for being the one who truly satisfies. Thank you for the ways you have come into my life, my thoughts, my actions to transform my appetites. And together we pray more, Lord. If we are hungry, help us to be hungry for more of you. If we are thirsty, help us to thirst for more of you. Help us to find all the sustenance, all the stamina we need by trusting you and receiving from your bounty. We pray that you would fill us each day to overflowing with your goodness so that we would be content not only to praise you and give you thanks, but also to share with others in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. I look forward to seeing you next week. I pray over your beautiful, restful sleep tonight. I pray that you have a beautiful experience transitioning from this time of meditation and prayer into your evening ritual. God bless you and your night. Amen. Love you all. Take care.